VR video tutorial on the susceptible, exposed, infected, recovered mortality model. I guess this is part three. Anyway, in the last one, we created a function for our model so that it's the solver for our model uh, works automatically and we don't need to have to constantly run everything again. Now, what I'm going to do here is I have my initial values and with fact that it's in a function now I don't have to constantly reset my initial values but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste these down and you'll see why here in a minute so copy and paste those and move those all the way to the end and this at the end here is where we were okay so we did this at the end of the last one I want to put these after where I'm gonna read in some data okay so the next thing you're going to do is you're either going to pause the video or you're going to go back and rewatch this because I need you to go to the repository that's linked below and grab the data for April 8th, 2020. Okay. And then we're going to read that in and I'm going to call it C data one. Okay. And then you were going to run this. So we have our data. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the U S data. Okay, because remember, this is global data. I can grab any country I want. So I'm just going to call it US1. How about that for right now? And this is going to be C data 1, where C data 1 dollar sign country is double equal sign to US. And we're going to put a comma here so that we grab all of the columns. And this will give us our US1 data or give us the data for the U.S. up to now. And we're going to plot those here in just a second, okay? But what I want to do is when I plot them, I want to see how well my model matches up to that, okay? So I have the data, and then I have my parameter values here. I'm going to just run up here real quick and grab this information, my function here, because I'm going to want to see how well my function matches the, up with everything. So here's my function. I've already pulled the data. Here are the... Uh, initial values. Here are my parameter values. I'm going to pass them through the function. Now what I am going to need to know is N1. Okay. Uh, so N1 in this case is going to be the number of rows in US1. Okay. And then I'm going to come down here and just make this. I'm going to take this out since I've already named it uh, N1 and it will just run the data out as or run the model out as far as the data goes. Okay. So now if I run this bit I have the data and it will have ran everything out for me so I can look and see how close my model with these parameters and these initial values matches up to the data. So let's start off here. It's pretty easy to grab this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the data from the US, US1 dollar sign. Well, actually, I'm going to do 1 to N1. I'm, I could put the dates along there, but I'm not going to at the moment. Okay, so I want US1 dollar sign. And these are the confirmed. And I have to be careful because this probably isn't right. And I'll explain that here in a minute. Okay, and I'm going to make these red. And if I just plot this, you'll get a picture here of what we see. Now, the problem with this picture is that it, number one, it keeps increasing. There's not, that's not a problem. Is that it contains everybody. It's anybody who was tested positive, they are confirmed. Now, if they've recovered since then, they're still in that number because it's cumulative. They're just adding people on, keep adding in, keep adding in. It's the total number of people who've been infected at any time. So we need to remove the people who've died and the people who've recovered, okay? So just keep that in mind. This is what we're going to do next is remove this so that we can actually see how well our model actually works because remember, our model is based on people who are actively infected. That's I would be actively infected. Uh, and we know that they have the disease. We also have the recovers and we have the uh, people who have died. So we have the this information that we need to put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another column for US1. And I'm going to call it act infect. Okay, so these are active infections. Uh, this is going to be a column. I'm going to take US1. I'm going to take the confirmed. I'm going to subtract out the deaths. And then I'm going to subtract out the recovers because they are no longer active. And this will give me what I actually want to plot here, which is this active infection. Okay. And so we, I'll put here corrected data. 
from what we have. And then if I plot this, you'll see that the picture pretty much looks the same. However, the scale jumps down. Okay, the scale will jump down a bit because there aren't that many active infections. Uh, now that I've removed these people. Now what I want to do is I just want to see how well my model fits on there. So it's going to go 1 to N1. And then I have my out 1. And then I have my infected, right? Color equals red. And we can see how well our model works. And we run this real quick. And we go, our model isn't very good right but it depends on these parameters and that's what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to talk about tuning these okay we want to tune these parameters so that we get a reasonable model fit and then after that we'll talk about how to do automated model fitting for this but right now we're just learning how to get the model how to marry it up to the data and we needed to create that as a function so in the next video that's what we're going to do is we're going to actually talk about how to marry the data to the model and tune it down to get to something reasonable, and then we'll see what predictions look like. But see you there.